Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Film Posters YouTube channel. My name is Huang, and today I'm going to be talking to you all about the newest film, Cassandro, directed by Roger Ross Williams. So Cassandro follows Saul Armendariz, a gay amateur wrestler from El Paso, who rises to international stardom after he creates the character Cassandro, the Liberace of Lucha Libre, if you will. And in this process, he upends not just the macho wrestling world, but also his own life. So this film premiered back at the Sundance Film Festival and I have been looking forward to watching this film ever since and I have to say I really like this film. This is essentially a biopic but it's a really well told biopic where you learn about the industry, the terminology, and if you're a wrestling fan, which hi, me, it's even more entertaining for you but it also introduces you to a heartwarming story about a man who not only wants to change the way Lucha Libre industry is seen, but also appreciate the women in his life who support him. Now, what is interesting about his this character, Saul, is that in the beginning, he showed up to basically lose his matches. And sometimes you can consider that similar to the terminology of a jobber in a squash match, where the match doesn't last too long, like I think less than five minutes, more or less. And you know who's going to win. It's very predictable. It's about as predictable as you can get. But naturally, Saul gets tired of losing, understandably so. And he already feels like an outsider in the place where he wrestles. He's told, if you're going to do this match, you're going to do this, this, and this, and this is how it ends. It doesn't really change that much for him. And he wants to wrestle. He wants to do something different. And even you see this at the beginning where... He tries to call something during the match to try to do a different move and make it interesting for the crowd, more than the same old, same old they've already seen. And his opponent doesn't want to do it, and he just doesn't go off script, if you will. So one day he realizes he wants to do something different. He wants to better his training, and he comes up with this idea, this new persona that he would play. And the character he comes up with is called an exotico. Exoticos are male wrestlers dressed in a form of, if you will, drag, portraying gay caricatures and what is interesting about this that i had to look it up myself one of the sites i read said that most exoticos were straight and they were mimicking a more flamboyant kind of wrestling and normally this kind of wrestler usually loses their match as his friend sabrina points out to him and so we wanted to change that so we said if i'm gonna do this and i want to go all out and do this very much inspired by the telenovelas he had seen during his time and especially one that comes up on the tv when this realization happens he says if i'm gonna do this i don't want to keep losing i want to win and he changes the game now the actor playing cassandro saul is gail garcia bernal which what a performance he delivers this is truly phenomenal work. I dare say awards worthy. The way he transforms for this role is unlike anything you've seen him do before. The amount of emotion he's providing to this character makes you care so much about his journey and you find yourself rooting for him. Even though you know that his character becomes successful, like a lot of times when fans watch wrestling, the best told stories are the ones that get all of the fans invested. Another thing I really liked about this film is I loved the relationship shown here between Saul and Sabrina, played by Roberta Colindres, who does an excellent job. She played this role perfectly, and she ends up becoming the one friend he makes within the wrestling world at the time where Saul realizes he doesn't want to keep losing, and she sees something in him and she wants to help him. And not only does she help him by bettering his craft, you know, by training him, but she helps make his dream come true yeah. by vouching for him, supporting him, and being there for him overall, just emotionally besides being in the ring. And as you see their friendships start to form and they bond, it's really quite a beautiful aspect that the film portrays. And I really enjoyed that. And you notice this because in his original locker room, as you can see in the beginning, he didn't really have that sense of community where he could feel comfortable talking to them as much as they did with each other. Yet here's Sabrina, who when they talk, there's no awkwardness. And she essentially becomes his best friend. That's how the film portrays it. And they do a really good job. Like I said, he has really strong relationships with the women in his life. So you also get to see this inside look into the relationship he had with his mother and they're very close bond. And I think that was beautiful to see. You see that she worked extremely hard to earn a living for both of them, 
raising Saul when his dad walked out on them, and he wants to give her the life he feels she deserves as a token of gratitude for everything she has done for him. Yet she also wants what's best for him, even though she can't always, for example, sit through his matches out of fear that something will happen to him, which is a very valid concern. However, when joining this kind of industry, be it Lucha Libre, be it professional wrestling, this is an industry where it's a risk you have to be willing to take because you love this art form, because you know it's part of the job, it could happen. You don't plan on an injury happen. No one does. But if it happens, you have to be prepared for it because that's what happens when you're an athlete and because you love that art form performing. This was a very beautiful relationship to see explored on screen. It was also interesting to analyze that feeling that Saul feels outside of Cassandro, where this character Cassandro gave him so much confidence to be who he is. And Saul ends up believing it at one point. He becomes Cassandro more than just the in-ring persona. He adapts things Cassandro gives to him to feel more confident in his life. He transports that into Saul. But something interesting you notice with Saul is he still has this feeling of not being or feeling good enough and constantly feeling like you have to prove something, especially in this case to Saul's dad. But you see some of that backstory in flashbacks and it was quite heartbreaking to see. But you see that when the dad leaves, Saul kind of has to constantly search for that love and approval, even though he gets it from the women in his life he still feels as though he missed out on having a dad and he doesn't really know what he can do to fix that relationship because he wants to share this with him. He wants to share a relationship with him. Internally, at one point, I thought he's resenting his father for what he did, but he used that to fuel his passion and he wanted to seek him out, like I said, and try to talk to him and have that father-son relationship he craved. And he really felt for him in that situation. Now, I also want to give a shout out to Raul Castillo, who does a very good job in his role. I don't want to give too much of his role away because I think the arc here is very well presented in this film with his character Geraldo and Saul. But I thought they had great chemistry together. They sold those emotional moments very well. And I overall really liked what he brought to this performance. It was really good. Now, we got to talk about Bad Bunny, a Boricua king. A lot of people are actually excited to see his role in this film after an image leaked of his character. So how was he? Well, in the role he was given, I thought he did a very good job. He just doesn't have a big enough role to really show off some acting chops, if you will. I think the screen time was like five minutes total, which is unfortunate. But he pops on that screen. You have to give him that. You can't miss him. He's just as charming and charismatic as he is in real life. I myself wanted to see more of his character on screen personally, because I am a very big Bad Bunny fan. And I was excited to see how big his role actually was. But given what he was given to do here, he does a good job. He just needed some more to do. That's all. If anything, this role works for his resume to show that if they ever want to make another kind of Lucha Libre wrestling film or a film that has that kind of technique as we've seen him do in the ring quite successfully. He's very good when it comes to performing in WWE. But if Hollywood wants to make a film where that set of skills is required, he already has some experience not only being in the ring, but acting in this film so he can handle the more dramatic roles, but also the in-ring work. And I think that'd be a really good thing to have on his resume like he does. He'll get the right role at some point. He's going to. Plus, he's still quite young. He's got time, especially if he were to get a substantially larger role than he has here. And I know that's what El Muerto was supposed to be, but it's no longer the case. A lot of people don't see it as such, but Lucha Libre is an art form, as is professional wrestling, in the ways in which you tell a story to connect with your audience, your crowd. I've always thought of it as the most exciting live theater production with, again, a lot of action. And probably some of the best stunt coordination you'd see on their version of stage, which is the ring. And they usually pull off that story because when the crowd's invested, they know they're doing it right. My best friend Caroline actually pointed out to me once that you can see it as the longest running telenovela if you're keeping up with these characters week to week. And that's actually really true. You're there for the dramatics, the stunts, the shocks, the twists, the turns. 
And when the product is really good, it looks like either side can win because you do have that battle of good guy, bad guy, and you know who you're going to root for. You know who you like. And ultimately, when it looks like either side can win a match, let's say, and continue on the story, it's more fascinating than a predictable option. I actually talked to the wrestling fan slash film critic a bit after watching this film, and he brought up an interesting point, which was that they cut out quite a bit of Cassandro's story. But we ended up agreeing that it seemed like a rights issue and that they had to tell an enticing story within a certain runtime that doesn't overstay its welcome and feels like you get a gist of the story and it's meant to inspire you to learn more about this character. For example, the well-known luchador Rey Mysterio, aka Rey Mysterio Sr., made up Cassandro's original character who worked underneath a mask and was called Mr. Romano. And if you think you've heard the name Rey Mysterio before, you have Rey Mysterio from WWE, nephew of Rey Mysterio Sr. And I thought while doing my research, when I found that tidbit, I thought it was really interesting. And when you are looking up more information about Cassandro and you are finding out more information about his life, it's quite an interesting life. And I do agree. I think they cut out quite a bit because of a rights issue. But what they presented here was really well done. And it does feel like a really great underdog story. So in conclusion, I really enjoyed Cassandro. This is a love letter to the world of Lucha Libre told through a beautiful story that encourages anyone who feels like they don't belong to keep fighting and prove the world wrong. This is a can't miss queer biopic in my opinion. Now I'm not sure if it's still playing in theaters at this point, but if it's not playing near you at this time, you can definitely check this out on Amazon Prime Video and I hope you enjoy this story as much as I did. So that is my review of Cassandra. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, you can hit the like button and subscribe. We'd greatly appreciate it here over on Film Posers. You can follow us at Film Posers on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and on Letterboxd, which is really exciting. We're, we're excited to see what we're going to do with this app. It's going to be a lot of fun. And if you haven't already, I don't know what you're waiting for, but hey, you should go check out our podcast available wherever you get podcasts, be it Spotify, Apple Podcasts, you should definitely check us out because we make some great entertaining content over there. Again, thank you so much for watching. And remember, we are all film posers. Bye.